eating. All right, hello boys and girls. Before we start today's lesson, I just wanna take time out and say that I'm hoping and praying that everybody is uh, safe, everybody's out of harm's way, and uh, most importantly, I still wanna tell you all that I love you and I truly miss you. Can't wait to see you all again. So having said that, today we're going to once again be dealing with measurement and today we're going to be dealing with equivalency with customary units of capacity. So before we start this lesson, I want you all to look at this scenario, give you something to think about and we'll share uh, later on in the lesson. It says, Casey has two and a half gallons of juice. How many one pint containers can he fill? Solve this problem any way you can. So that's something I want you all to think about throughout the lesson. Casey has two and a half gallons of juice. How many one pint containers can he fill? Solve this problem any way you can. So, before we start the lesson, boys and girls, I want you all to take a look at today's objective. Okay, so today's objective is, in today's lesson, I can convert customary units of capacity from one unit to another and recognize the relative size of different units. So that's our objective for today. I can convert customary units of capacity from one unit to another and recognize the relative size of different units. So before we start the lesson, boys and girls, of course we want to go over the vocabulary.
So the vocabulary for this lesson goes as follows. We have fluid ounces, and throughout the lesson, boys and girls, when you see fluid ounces, you'll see it. Um, you'll look at like uh, FL.OZ, and that stands for fluid ounces. Then we talk about pints. And pints, the symbol for pints, in parentheses, PT. Then we're going to talk about quarts. And the abbreviation of symbol for quarts is QT. And gallon, the abbreviated symbol for gallon is GAL. So it's fluid ounces, pint, quart, and gallon. So fluid ounces, boys and girls, is the capacity of each customary unit to be filled with fluid. The capacity to be filled with fluid are fluid ounces. Once again, you'll see, always see FLOZ. So, let's look at what a pint may look like. Let's look at what a quart may look like. Let's take a look at what a gallon may look like, boys and girls. So, hopefully all, you all can still see me, boys and girls. Hey, okay. Now, so, of course, we're in a stuffy household, and of course, I had to go to the kitchen and get some things that relative to units of, of capacity, dealing with measurement. So, the smallest unit of measure is, of course, a cup. So we all have cups in the house, in the houses. This is what a cup obviously looks like. Okay. Then we go from a cup to a pint. And right here you see what is this a pint of milk. I haven't drank it yet, I don't want to keep it out too late, but it's a pint of milk. So, look at it so far, boys and girls. Cup and a pint. Then the next unit of measure up is a quart. And of course, I, I went to the refrigerator and got a, a quart of milk. Right? So, we have a cup. We have the pint, we have the quart, and this big guy right here is the gallon. Of course, this, was, this once was Mr. Stuckey's gallon of orange juice, but as you all can see, it is completely empty. But at one time, this is what this was. So, we're talking about the customer units of measurement with fluid ounces again, we have the cup, we have the pint, we have the quart, and we have the gallon. So, what I'm going to do is something I want you to take in your note as equivalences, and then from these equivalences that, are, that I'm going to write on the board, boys and girls, I'm, I'm again going to talk about them over there at the table. So just as a reference point, okay, one cup, that's C, one cup equals eight fluid ounces. So what we're saying, boys and girls, eight fluid ounces can fill that cup there. That's what we're talking about, okay? Then we have a pint. Now, a pint is equal to two cups, okay? Or 16 fluid ounces, right? So we have a cup which is the smallest, eight fluid ounces. Then we have the pint, two cups in a pint, 16 fluid ounces. 
Then we have a quart, which is two pints. Right? And then we have a gallon, which is four quarts. All right, okay? So, so once again, if we had the cup, we could put two of these cups, boys and girls, in a pint, right? Okay. Look at this pint. You can put two of these pints inside of a quart. Now, this quart, boys and girls, you can put four quarts in a gallon, all right? Why don't you take a look at that again, boys and girls, before I erase that. So, let's look at this example for a second. Miss Neely's class. Needs five gallons. A punch. Five gallons of punch for a family bath night. So I want you all to look at this example before we get into it. Miss Neely's class needs five gallons of punch for family math night. How much of each unit of capacity is equivalent to five gallons of punch? Now I want you to think about that for a second before we get into that, boys and girls. And just as a reminder, boys and girls, while we're doing this distant learning, you all by now, while I'm teaching this and writing this, you all can pause uh, the video at any time that you choose so that you can write the examples down and also write uh, anything that I put up on the whiteboard. Okay, if you think you know how to solve this, Boys and girls, raise your hand. Let me see how many hands I see raised here. Okay, there's one. Okay, there's a, there's a, okay, there's two or three more. Excellent, excellent job. Okay. So now, boys and girls, what I want you all to do, I want you all to see if what you put down to solve this 
um, has a lot to do with what I'm going to put up on the board. So what I'm going to do, you all should already have this in, on, on paper. I'm going to erase this and then I'm going to give you the example on how to solve this particular type of problem. Okay, so what you see starting off, boys and girls, we have our graphic organizer or our chart. So we have gallons, quarts, pints, and cups. So we already know that at the end, we want to know that we, ha we have five gallons, how many quarts, how many pints, or cups at the end will, will be equivalent to five gallons. Okay, so... What we, what we do know, boys and girls, is there are four quarts in a gallon, so we would multiply one times four, and that would give you four there. So if we know that there's four quarts in a gallon, and we have two gallons, if we multiply that four quarts, what would that give you? Of course, that would give you eight quarts in two gallons. So, how many quarts would be in three gallons? Three gallons times four quarts. It gives you 12 quarts. Four gallons times four quarts we we'll give you 16 quarts, and in five gallons, there's four quarts in a gallon. That would give you 20 quarts in a gallon there. So, what do we know about the relationship of pints to quarts? Okay, so we know that there are two pints once again we know it's two pints in this court right okay so if it's two pints in that court and we have four courts here so that would give us eight pints, right? In two gallons, multiplying by two again, because we have eight quarts and we know there's two pints to every quart. So that would give us 16 pints. So when we had three gallons or 12 quarts, we know that we have two pints to every quart again. So 12 times two pints will give you, in three gallons, 24 pints. 
Now, so we have four gallons equal to 16 quarts. We know that there's two quarts, two pints of every quart. Multiply the two pints times 16 quarts. Give you 32 pints. So in five gallons, we have five gallons, 20 quarts. There's two pints in every quart. So we multiply 20 times 2, and that will give you 40 pints in 5 gallons. Okay, so now we have the gallons, quarts, pints, and cups. So we know that we have one gallon, there's four, in every gallon there's 4 quarts and 8 pints. What we also know is this that if you can see this closely boys and girls in two cups right in two cups right for every two cups there's a pint in every two cups so we say that to say, so if there's two cups in a pint, and we have eight pints, that would give us 16 cups. Bam. So in one gallon, four quarts, eight pints, 16 cups. So in two gallons, we have eight quarts, 16 pints. And if it's two cups to every pint, we take those 16 pints multiplied by two cups, that would give us 32 cups. Wow, that's a lot. Now, in three gallons, we have 12 quarts, 24 pints, and we know there's two cups in every pint times two would give us 48. Now, so in four gallons, we have 16 quarts, 32 pints, and we know it's two cups in every pint, so we multiply 32 pints times two, would give us 64 cups in four gallons. And finally, we have five gallons, there's 20 quarts in five gallons, there's 40 pints in five gallons, we also know that there's, once again, there's two cups in every pint. So if we have 40 pints multiplied by two cups. Wow, there are 80 cups in five gallons. So just as a review, one gallon, four cups, eight pints, 16 cups in one gallon. In two gallons, we have eight quarts. 16 pints, 32 cups. In three gallons, we have 24 quarts. We have 12 quarts, 24 pints, and 48 cups. In four gallons, we have 16 quarts, 32 pints, and 64 cups. In five gallons, this is what we want, this is what we're trying to figure out. If we have five gallons, there are 20 quarts, and in 20 quarts, there are 40 pints. And in 40 pints, there are 80 cups. And so that would be the scenario trying to find the equivalences of five gallons. Now, I want to go back, boys and girls. We had talked about in the beginning when I gave you all that uh, a scenario for you all to look at it at a later time, when it said, Casey had two and a half gallons of juice. How many one pint containers can he fill? Solve this problem any way you can. And so I'm wondering, what kind of ways did you all solve that, boys and girls? I wonder. Oh, I see some hands raised again. Well, you, boys and girls, you all are just too smart. This is, this is just wonderful. Okay, so now, 
How many pints are in two and a half gallons? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this out of our way for a second. Without breaking or spilling anything, I'm hoping. Because what I want us to do, boys and girls, is I want us to analyze and take a look at some work that two students outside of your classroom, what they tried to do so far as figuring out this problem. So how many one pints are there in two and a half gallons? Can you all see this, boys and girls? Can you all see me? Very good. Okay, so we have so we have Janelle's work, and we have Ina's work. So once before we start talking about, I want you to just take a look at their work, boys and girls, and just see what each one of those children did, and and, and I want you to figure out: Are they both right? Is nobody right? Or is just one of them right? So I want you to think about that for a second. Okay. Now, so what do you think? If you think just Janelle's work is correct, boys and girls, Give me a distant learning thumbs up. Okay. If you think Ina's work is just correct, give me a thumbs up. If you think both Janelle and Ina's, uh, the way they solve is correct, give us a thumbs up. And what about those out there if you think neither one of uh, Janelle's work or Ina's work is correct? Give me a thumbs up again, boys and girls. Once again, we're not worrying about who's right or wrong. We just want to see your, we, we just want to, we concern ourselves with your reason, your train of thought. That's all we're concerned about. Okay, so now, let's, let's look at Janelle's work. So we know that I asked you all to write in the beginning how many, two, how many pints are in two and a half gallons. So if we analyze Janelle's work, this, this, this is how Janelle decided to solve this problem. So she, so she started out, she had two and a half gallons, and she, and she wanted to multiply that by eight pints. Okay. So there's eight pints in a gallon. Obviously, this is her train of thought. So let me, let me look at And boys and girls, you all know I don't do this in my classroom, but I'm gonna do a little, I'm gonna have to make sure I do the pointer while we're doing this distant learning. So, can you all see that, boys and girls? Can you see it? Okay, so two and a half times eight pints because it's eight pints in a gallon. So, when she multiplied two gallons times eight pints plus another half a gallon times eight pints in a gallon. And when she did that, boys and girls, two gallons and eight pints in a gallon, this is how she came up with 16 pints, in, just in two gallons now. Then she added another half pint to it. Why? Because we said we're trying to find out how many pints in two and a half gallons. So we have a half a gallon times eight pints in a gallon, one half times eight, she came up with an additional four pints. And then she added 16 pints plus four pints. And when she added 16 plus four, she got 20 pints. So two and a half gallons equals 20 pints, according to Janelle. So that's how Janelle solved it. So now let's look at Ina's work. 
Enoch decided not just to do um, the algorithm there, but she wanted to make a join. Once again, as you all know, what's our motto, boys and girls? There's always more than one way to skin a cat. And we know that there's always more than one way to solve a problem. So Enoch's way obviously is not the way Janelle solved it. So what did, she, what did, what did Enoch do? Ina said, hmm, she knew that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ina knew that there are eight pints in a gallon. Okay? So then she put, then Ina put one gallon equals eight pints. But then just below it, Ina thought, okay. Here's another representation, this bar here, of a gallon, all the way across, just like at the top. But what Ina elected to do, Ina this 